GitHub achievements, Ruby package security, a YouTuber to the rescue, and saying goodbye to an old friend. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And look, we were off last week because the production team was busy and my normal studio was not available today. So we're gonna try this like wood backdrop. I kind of dig it. Please like and subscribe to the video so that I can get a promotion and buy myself a remote setup like this for my office at home. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Or am I? Like and subscribe anyway. My shirt this week is the logo for Adam, which is GitHub's text editor. And I think that this was maybe the second iteration of the design. Anyway, the reason I'm wearing this shirt is twofold. So first, it's a great shirt. I love the logo, super fun. Uh, and second, uh, because GitHub announced last week that we are officially sunsetting the Atom project. And that means that as of December 15th, 2022, all the projects in the Atom organization will be archived and no new builds will be released. It's always hard to say goodbye to software, and I know that this was a decision that the team didn't take lightly. But the truth is, as Ashley commented on the official blog post, which is linked down below, Adam hasn't had significant feature development in several years, just maintenance and security updates. And the community involvement has declined too. So there are only so many things that the team can focus on, and it makes more sense to work on the cloud development experience with GitHub Codespaces. But before Adam blasts off into the great beyond, I wanted to take a minute to thank the various contributors and community members who worked on the project over the years. And although Adam the text editor might be no more, the Electron framework, which Adam was the basis of, it was originally called the Adam shell, lives on and thrives. It powers thousands of apps like Slack and Discord and VS Code and many, many more. So cheers to you, Adam. Next, if you're an Adam user who's looking for an alternative text editor, might I suggest giving VS Code a shot? Like Adam, it also uses Electron, but it has a really robust development team and an insanely active community. In fact, VS Code 1.68, the May 2022 release, just came out. More details are in the show notes in the description, but the latest version supports deprecated extensions, so you can learn if you need to replace an old extension or if its features are now built into VS Code. That's very cool. And users can now sponsor the favorite extensions, so please support the people that support our communities. And uh, there's TypeScript 4.7 support and a bunch of other updates, again, linked down below. And VS Code is also available on GitHub if you want to contribute or offer feedback. Next, I want to talk about a new public beta that hit GitHub last week, achievements. So achievements are badges that you earn based on uh, GitHub activity and developer mind milestones. Basically, they're digital stickers, uh, but not NFTs. Uh, you can choose to show off on your profile readme. And if you don't care about any of this stuff, that's fine. Don't worry. It's totally optional and you can opt out of all of it but I think it's fun. And to start with, the team is rolling out a couple of achievements in different categories. The YOLO badge is my favorite. Uh, that means that you've merged commit without review. Someone on Hacker News said, we shouldn't be encouraging this behavior, but I disagree. You really only do live once. Anyway, more details about achievements are linked below. And if you have feedback, be sure to let us know in the GitHub discussions area. Next, I wanted to give a shout out to the Ruby Gems community. Ruby Gems is a package manager for the Ruby community. Think of it like NPM, but for Ruby and Rails folks. In fact, Ruby Gems actually predates NPM by like six years or something. But the Ruby Gems team is committed to making sure that the fallout from software supply chain attacks is less severe. And so they've decided to follow in the steps of some other package ecosystems like NPM and GitHub actually, and they're enforcing security policies for the most popular projects. So starting this week, the maintainers of at least the top 100 Ruby Gem packages will be getting warnings um, at the RubyGems command line and the website if multi-factor authentication isn't enabled on their accounts. And anyone who maintains a gem that has more than 165 million downloads will also get this recommendation. Now, this is a recommendation at first, but starting August 15th, RubyGems is going to require MFA for all those maintainers. And this is really great to see. I applaud the RubyGems community for doing what they're doing to keep the ecosystem more safe. Moving on, I also need to give some huge kudos to the YouTube channel, Linus Tech Tips, and to Linus himself for helping get more open source and less restrictive hardware into the world. A YouTuber who didn't make the world worse, who knew? So the TLDR is, there's videos linked below. Linus was trying to set up an absurd number of light switches in his house. And he learned that the company who made these smart switches 
wouldn't issue firmware updates unless you were also using a specific smart hub, meaning that someone who wanted to manage and control their own setup using something like Home Assistant, which is an open source project that works across the various standards, was SOL. Linus was understandably upset about this, and he went public. And the company who makes those switches, Jasco, had a really terrific response. They've agreed not only to put the firmware for the most popular devices on GitHub, they've also announced a partnership with the founder of Home Assistant and a one-click over-the-air integration with Home Assistant, and they're committed to engaging more with the community. This is really, really great to see, and it exemplifies how open source, in this case, I'm talking about Home Assistant, can help everyone. And it also shows how people using their platforms for good in this case, I'm talking about LTT, can enact change. So I've got the videos and other stuff linked below for more details, but good stuff. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So it's maintainer month, and I wanted to give a shout out to two of my favorite terminal customizing projects. So like any proper nerd, I have a very good terminal customization game. My prompts are, are very uh, slick looking, they're great. But there are tons of different tools that you can use to configure your shell however you want. There's Oh My Zosh, that's one of the most famous, but there are other ones too. But I really wanted to give a shout out to two projects, Oh My Posh and Starship. And these two projects are both cross-shell and cross-platform, meaning that you don't have to decide on a shell to have your customizations. So this could be useful if you use Z Shell on your work machine, Fish at home, and you rely on good old-fashioned Bash when you're logging into a remote server. That's actually exactly what I do. Now, these aren't going to be as in-depth as like a proper terminal package manager like Oh My Zosh. You can actually use the two together if you wanted. But for people who want a pretty terminal and aren't as interested in lots of plugins, I think this is great. So I've got links to both projects in the show notes and the description. And I wanted to thank both of the maintainers for those projects. Let me know your favorite prompt customizer and your shell of choice in the comments down below. And let me know your thoughts on any of our other stories. Quick programming note, the next few episodes will be remote. I'm going to be out of town for work and I'm gonna do my best to make the production as watchable as possible. If I have bad internet or if something else breaks, we might miss a week, but I will do my best to avoid it. And this does it for me. If you like this episode, like and subscribe, tell your friends, and be sure to stay tuned to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.